My suggestion is we have a lot of research about the negative things about the problem. Let's spend time in a publications campaign, a public campaign that talks about the good stories, about the progress, about how people are making it, and demystifying the negative parts of what is happening. How many of us have had a negative experience with a um, high school counselor? Mm -hmm. Why don't we use you, a lot of us, why don't we use YouTube um, to develop a series of videos and Facebook where students can explore different careers, can find out about classes, and they can use the media that they're already in, and they can start to learn about college, about the school. So if they're already curious, they can use those different videos to find the information that they need. So if they're in a small rural community, if they're counselors who don't give information, they can start connecting with information from a credible source. So if that's coming from a government or um, the state, then the students can say, hey, on this website, it tells me for the state of California, I need this, this, and that, and I can connect to these resources or maybe it's going to connect me with sources in my own community. So let's meet students where they are and use the technology that um, can empower them to take over their education next steps. Well, my idea would be to emulate a business model that's already working. I'll, I'll talk from my program. I'm with the Mesa Schools program here. Uh, why doesn't the school look something as simple or as to just change what the mission statement is? So we require our students that graduate from our program to be ready to enter into a four-year university. You know, so if the goal right now is to just get a general education at a high school, then that's where it starts wrong. So just find models of programs or other countries that educate, I mean India, China, that educate their kids you know, to a higher level, and maybe that should be our new standard. So emulate models that have already worked and implement them here. Hi, my name is Mari Gonzalez. I'd like to see a mass media ad campaign, of, of course including TV and social media and the traditional and the newer media, uh, saying uh, Latinos are smart, Latinos are powerful, Latinos, uh, because the, uh, one of the things that I, as a teacher, CLC, ESL teacher, um, one of the things that I hated the most about public schools is the self-fulfilling prophecy of the teachers who don't challenge Latinos. So this will include, of course, the ad uh, uh, campaign will include Facebook and all the social, social media. Hi, my name is uh, Rafael Bols, and uh, I have a master's degree in computer science. I've been working in tech for about 12 years. And so I want to share two thoughts. Uh, first, uh, as great as the Khan Academy is, you know, Los Altos is not quite the Latin, right? And so, you know, a big thought, uh, trying to make that work for the Latino community is access, right? So access to the hardware, access to the tools, and continued access, right? Because uh, the fortunate or unfortunate thing about technology is it keeps changing, right? So if you don't keep having that continuous access, it's just that you're going to keep falling behind. Uh, and I think the other thing is access to the knowledge or information. Right? So, you know, <clears throat> I, I spent a lot of time uh, learning about computers and programming and all this stuff. And I have a sister who's a first grade teacher and got liberal arts. Great, committed. But, you know, as far as you know, getting a blog, as far as what kind of skills does a first grader need to learn to be able to write the algorithms, to be able to innovate in the future, right? As much as I love my sister, she just didn't have that training. So there needs to be a partnership between the Latinos who have had that access and the committed teachers that are already there. Right? And, uh, and this partnership has to deal with part of its money. Right? Because you know, the SoCal Valley, as everyone knows here, it's expensive to live here. Right? And so you know, if you're 10 and you've got 12 years there, I'm sorry. Hello, my name is Marta Edith Hernandez, and I come from the social media world, but I also come from the social, social psychology background, and um, if there's anything I learned there is really understanding your audience. And I know for us, at least my understanding is who we're really trying to target are the blue-collar parents, the ones who are listening to the radio, the ones who are genders, the ones who are truck drivers, because those are the ones that are going to influence our children. Um, th this is our biggest target market, especially 
um, really understanding that our families, our culture, we're matriarchs. People think that we're patriarchs, but we're not. The mother has the largest influence in the household. So my direct suggestion is to partner with who I consider our Latino Oprah, who is Violin por la Mañana. And he is on the radio, and he has the influence that we need and already have access to. He was the one that got the million people to march in LA for immigrant rights. So I think partnering with Violin por la Mañana to really drill into these people's minds every single day is going to make a difference. So we give you all another 30 seconds to respond to anything you heard or anything else you'd like to add. Um, I'm Olga Rosario and my background is in marketing and communication. So I could, uh, agree with a lot of the things that we're saying here. Personally, in my experience working with non for profit and education, the middle schoolers are at risk. Those are the ones who will, if you get them then, they are going to continue to high school, they're going to continue to college. So target that group and have them uh, mentor each other, have a peer group online, social media, website in which the ones who get it help the ones who do not get it. It's a peer mentoring program. What was your name again? Rafael. Um, I agree with what you're saying. A few years ago, um, I put on a conference with AT&T and we looked at access and a lot of people do have access to different technology, but it's really important how you use that um, technology and that's what sets apart different ethnic groups from success in the future. So I just think that was a really great idea as far as how we really work with different segments um, to how they use that technology in the future and the more partnerships we can have like that and bringing together not just companies and nonprofits but also um, students who are doing the PhDs and stuff. follow up on Rafael again. I, mean, I think it's important if we're going to raise the standards of what we expect out of our educators, we do need to be able to partner up with the private industry and give them the tools so that they can achieve what we want them to do. We can talk about how it's failing, but what are we doing as a private industry to help them out and partner with them? And then the third thing, I would, last thing I would add is that the parents need to be involved. You know, I took my kids to the Eastside School District initially there was nobody showing up at PTA meetings. But you know, when La Banda comes, everybody has time to go to the Valle. Uh, I brought my kids over to Campbell, and it was more involvement with the parents. And it wasn't the funding that was a difference. It was the parents' involvement that also made the school accountable. I would say keep this conversation going, and not just to keep the conversation, but have it as an open source with all the uh, ideas that you have and when people come to the table, just you know, ask them what can you bring to it. So, so the second point I kind of want to touch on is, uh, you know, the, the R word, or racism, right? Because I just think that, you know, <clears throat> now that we're in 2011, people just don't like to talk about it, right? I mean, there was a time when people were very committed, there was a movement where people were grassroots organizing to, to do something about it. Eh, things are better now. Right? And so uh, I think if we're going to try to tackle this, and it's particular with technology like math and science and computing, we need to talk about the, the ingrained racism there is in this educational system. You open up a physics book, it's white people in it, right? You go to this museum, this computer history museum, you go downstairs, look at who's, who's in that museum, right? Well, I'll, I'll go back to the, the strength of the, the power of the media, right? The first two ladies spoke about um, TV and uh, YouTube, which I think are so, so powerful. And I think we, as, as culture, we're doing such a good job at creating all these documentaries and all these nonprofits, and that's all great, but we're not going mainstream. Talk about mainstream is Univision, right? And uh, they're not putting out the telenovelas that are telling women to go get an education. They're all talking about, they're all waiting for Prince Charming's, mm -hmm. right? So how do we go mainstream with pe the, the people that are already in a specific area instead of trying to recreate it? Big round of applause for our second set.